Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Super excited to have my friend Steve Pugh is on the show with us. Um, he is going to talk about the power of lead generation. We're going to hear his story. He's got a great testimony and a great story. And then later on in the show, we're going to bring a special guest on, Greg Woolley, and we'll, we'll share with you what's going on with Greg. Steve, it's been a long time coming. Thank you so much for being here. How are you, my friend? Absolutely, sir. Blessed and thankful that you reached out. And yes, you're right. It has been a, a, a little while coming. And I'm thankful you didn't butcher my last name because I, oh. I hear all kinds of variations. I Pug. can't even imagine. How else would you? Pugga? Oh, I got that one too, Ted. Yes, sir. No, it doesn't bother me, but I appreciate you nailed it. So it's like a church oh, yeah. pew, right? That's right. Just mm -hmm. like a church pew. All okay. right, so I told you before we went live, before we dig into the power of lead gen, which I think is on everyone's mind, building a database, learning how to utilize your database, uh, really the power there. Let's learn a little bit about you. So a little 411 on Steve Pugh. Mm -hmm. I'm on the hot seat, huh? All right, so um, I don't know, some of you may know. So I've been in the business, gosh, probably 25, 26 years now. Uh, total, got licensed, had a few, I don't want to say menial jobs, but had a few jobs prior to um, prior to finding real estate, if you will, right after high school. Found real estate at 19 years of age. Um, my dad, of all people, was the one that suggested I, I get off my ass and do something meaningful. <laughs> so found real estate at 19 and um, been in it ever since. Um, why, so... Why though when you said you found it your dad suggested it was because you had a gift for talking to people was it uh the the oh. generational wealth what was it some people will beg to differ on that gift that dad but hey <laughs> um i think you know we have a real estate background right so my dad we back in england my dad was a spec builder um nothing major but he built a house we'd live in it we were constantly moving we probably moved 12 times um, as a child. So he'd build one, we'd live in it. Then he'd build another one. And while he was, then when that one was completed, we'd move to that one. So real estate was kind of in the blood. Uh, he su just suggested it. I took my license. I actually, I flunked the class exam my first time. Don't tell anybody. A lot of people well, did. Don't do that. <laughs> right. And then nailed, uh, nailed the, the uh, state exam first time and then stayed. I worked at a small independent brokerage. I found a boutique brokerage down in Winter Park off of Aloma, uh, Aloma and Goldenrod, not the real Winter Park, the <laughs> humble Winter Park, if you will. So found a small boot boutique brokerage there, um, a small environment, great broker, very hands-on. Um, I was there for about five years. And then, you know, I kind of thought I was Jack the Lad at that point, as one does, and decided that in my infinite wisdom, I was gonna open my own brokerage. So I went ahead and did that. That was back in 2003 and then ran, ran my own show for a while. Um, a lot of people lost everything during the recession. I wasn't the only one. Went broke and um, just like everybody else, you claw your way back. You live and you learn. It was a blessing in disguise. There's a lot of hidden lessons in there and thankful and blessed to, to be where we're at. I mean, still a lot of growth, a lot of learning left. When you think you're done, you're done, right? That's correct. So, but thankful to, to be where I'm at. Yeah. So let's talk about obviously you've had successes and then ups and downs, just like we all have in the in the real estate world or really in any business. Talk about the lead gen, because this is on everybody's mind, like everybody. They want to know about lead gen. They want to know how to build a database. They want to know what to do with their database. There's this database marketing company and this one and that one. And it's very overwhelming. And then I think mm -hmm. people get it out analysis paralysis and really don't even know how how to do it so let's yeah. take a deep dive gotcha so at the end of the day there is no shiny object right i had like the same as everybody else i had shiny object syndrome for a while you're always you know they gave me this ted this is what my people gave me that gives you some idea <laughs> okay <laughs> so because i i was here there and everywhere i so, love that yeah <laughs> So that gives you an idea. But in all honesty, there isn't the only the best way to produce and make this business work 
is to build that database, build it daily, do the menial activities, even though it's boring and it's day to day and it's, it, and it's going to be boring. All you have to do is commit two and a half to three hours of diligent focus work a day, which I think we can all do. Every day is not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. There's going to be days that maybe you don't hit that, that time frame. Um, you know, when you're lead genning, I, I tend to tell people it comes in thirds. A third of it's going to suck. A third of it's going to be great. And a third of it's going to be okay. And as long as you can come to understand that fact and get in that space each and every day, your business is going to be fine. But it's, it's consistency. It's time on task over time. If you, if you do it a day and then you don't do it for three days and then you do it again, you lose momentum. It's almost better that you do it daily, no matter how bad it seems, just so that you keep that momentum flowing. And then when you get the results, then, then it becomes easier and you can justify it in your mind as to why you're doing it. Like before I got on with you, I circle prospected. So we're big into circle prospecting, expires, SOI, and database. So I circle prospected and picked up, doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen every day. You may go for a two and a half, three hour session and get big fat zero. But the difference is, is getting, is doing it again the next day. Okay. And then you build this database. So with circle prospecting per se, you know, three goals out of a conversation is to strengthen a relationship, get a referral, get an appointment. You very seldom are going to get an appointment on circle prospecting. Sometimes I've gotten referrals. I got one last week. A guy got him on the phone. Oh, we just listed a property on XYZ Street. We know that one one property list, one or more may come up right away. Who do you know that's not going to move into the neighborhood or make a move or wants to make a move right now? I said that all in one breath. But he ended up finding out that he had a property in the Poconos and he needed an agent up there that turned into a referral. So it's just making the calls. It's the activity and not overthinking it and understanding that, yes, you're going to get hung up on. Yes, you're going to get told to take a walk. Um, but it's just building that muscle, man. And if you can put yourself in those positions daily, that muscle builds and then it becomes easier. And ideally you want to try, and it's not easy, but you want to try to get to the point where if you don't do it, your day doesn't feel complete. Like if you don't, like with me, and I'm not in the greatest shape, there's people in a lot better shape than I am, but if I don't go to the gym, I feel it, right? Like my head doesn't feel right. So, that's the true, that's the same with my lead gen. And not every day is perfect, but if I don't do it, so, you know, I just don't feel right. Like there's something missing, but you get to that point where you do it. You've got just time on task over time. You know, let me, let me ask you, um, talk about the, the challenge, the psychology. Why do people hesitate and hate making calls? Why do people what and give them maybe a tool or two that they can use to overcome that. So we've kicked this around a bit, right? You've got to find two to three lead generation pillars that work for you. Um, some people just don't want to make the calls and they're deathly afraid of it. That's fine. If not, you need to, in your schedule, your daily schedule, you need to replace that with some other form of lead generation. If you're better in person, build your lead generation around either door knocking or open houses. But it's the same with everything. They've got to be done consistently. There was a gentleman in our group that did open houses from, true story, from 8 to 10 a.m. and then from 4 to 6 p.m. People going to work, coming from work five days a week, did $10 million worth of business, you know, just out of that. So... You know what I mean? I don't want to force everybody down that cold calling road just because I do it. Um, But if there are people that are interested in pursuing that, gosh, Ted, what would be one thing? I mean, obviously, they have the fear of rejection. Um, Sometimes I'll still have that. Because we're all, we're safe people. What is the fear of rejection? Is it, is it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by the psychology of it because I think more people would be successful if they did what you just said, the consistency to me, no matter how many times you get, beat in the head, you've got to get back up and continue to do it. But people don't even start. And I think that's part of the problem is that they don't they don't start on the lead gen. They don't or they've been told it's this formula or that formula. Obviously, you've developed your own for yourself and your team over time. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
Right. But it, it happens by doing it, right? It's like leadership. It's like getting better at leadership. Nine times out of 10, you can read all the books you want, but a lot of times it's just putting into practice and doing it. Um, you've probably heard it all a bunch of times on the show. People telling you the same thing about consistency. And, and in all honesty, that's what it is. It's just getting into action, making those first couple of calls or touches, um, and then that'll lead to momentum. I guess going back to that, I'm trying to gather my thoughts. It's fear of rejection. It's ego. We're worried about how we're going to feel if somebody rejects us. Rejects us. Um, I mean, I just tell myself, Ted, at the end of the day, life's too short. And, and if somebody reacts that way to me on the other end of the phone, that there's something going on within their own personal life, and I'm not going to take it personally, right? And you just hope that everything's going okay with them. If they're one of the people that say, screw you, don't call me, I don't want to talk to you. Obviously, there's something there, right? And that's what I tell myself. It's, it's nothing to do with me. God help them, God bless them, whatever they're going through, and I move on. Never end, never end off your lead gen session on a call like that. You want to you make that one more call. So Got to keep going. Got to keep plugging, plugging through. What makes being at your brokerage different from your perspective? Oh, boy. Um, I mean, I saw, I saw the squirrel <laughs> gift they gave you, but um, I love that. But I think you have a, to me, you have a unique personality. You have a, a you're, you're kind mm -hmm. and driven. And a lot of times those two things don't go well together, but you seem to have mastered that. So w what can people expect if they're working in your brokerage or if they're working with one of the agents in your brokerage? Oh, hey, Ted, I appreciate that. Huh? I feel good about myself. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I am kind. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm hard on myself, and I wouldn't expect from others what I don't expect from myself. I'll get in the trenches with you. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think what has opened my eyes in the last probably five years um, well, probably in the last two and a half to three, is just having that growth mindset, right? And being around people that want to consistently learn, understand that they don't know it all, are humble enough to, to say that they want to learn more and are teachable and are coachable. Um, and, and, and money is important. And I, you know, I hope I'm not conning myself when I say this. Money is definitely important. But for me now, more of the journey is about being the best that I can be so I can show up for other people um, that are in business with, that I'm in business with, or that are important to me in my life. So, you know, you feel like you're letting those people down. That's another thing, too, you need to think about, right? Like, if you really want to get brutally honest with yourself, you, how would you feel if you had to go home and say, you know, tell your, your son or daughter, hey, daddy didn't do his job today. Daddy didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't make his calls. You know? Right. That's no. a tough one to swallow, man. <laughs> so, so, but you, set, you set yourself, like, you know that that's you. And I love that you have that expectation of yourself and that you're willing to get into the trenches with other people. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, one of the reasons why I feel like we're having this mass uh, movement in the market in the real estate market from agency to agency is because people aren't feeling uh, that their brokers are getting into the trenches with them, their team leaders. And so they're hungry for that. So um, they may think they've got a sweet deal at XYZ uh, commission level, but in reality, they're looking for so much more. And I think leaders uh, overlook that and they, they minimize how important that is to people. So let's talk about the real estate market really quick. And then, oh. I'll, then, then we'll bring Greg on. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are you seeing now? How are you feeling? I like to ask anybody who's in it because everybody's got mm -hmm. a different answer. Um, are you chicken little? The sky's falling. It's really bad. Are you seeing opportunity? Uh, do you think that the year is going to continue in the way it is? Uh, what's your perspective? Nobody has a crystal ball, right? I right. think that, you know what I mean? If you do the work, you're going to be fine. Everybody's talking about it. The thinning of the herd People that have been in the business don't know what this down market is going to look like, feel like they'll be out of the business first. It, you know, you, if you're around the right people and you're doing the right activities, an environment will produce productivity, right? I'm big on accountability and I'm big on being in the right environment and just showing up. 
All you have to do is show up for yourself. That's probably 80% of it is just showing up. And when I mean that, when I say that, people probably get confused, but just, you know, being in the office and showing up and being here on time and being around other producers, hearing them on the phone, being in the environment, and that will invoke productivity. That's probably the biggest advice. However uncomfortable it feels to go into an office where maybe you're not real close with people yet, or it's outside your comfort zone, you'd rather just sit at home and work from home. No, put yourself in these positions. And you're going to be just fine, but you've got to, you've got to commit, you know? You do. So, and how about the market mm -hmm. itself? The market. See, I got, I went that way, Ted. You got to watch I'll me. Let, I let you, oh, I let you go as far as you could. That's good. good. <laughs> okay. So market, I think as long as you do the work and you are well-versed in your presentation skills and, pre and presenting price, um, I think that things are going to be fine. I think we're going to end up probably three to five percent appreciation this year. We are seeing some dips. Obviously, I'm sure you're aware we're seeing it tick back up. If properties are priced right, we're still I'm presenting properly and marketed correctly. We're still getting multiple offers. Um, so I think we're going to be fine. Just get yourself in the right environment around the right people. Um, do do the work and do it consistently. Try to quiet the noise, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to spend your, your time talking about the market. You want to take it, right? Correct. So try to quiet the noise and just do the work and keep your head down. And, and before you know it, things will be fine. And just concentrate on your database. You know, there's, we had a young lady that started with us. And um, I can't be everywhere. She's only been here about two weeks and she was struggling a little bit and she came in and I was grateful that she did, right? Because you can lead a horse to water, you can't make it drink. There's only so much I can do. And she came in and I sat here with her for about an hour and we got her phone out, which she hadn't done. And we started calling through the contacts in her phone and then calls started. Just in that short hour, people started calling her back. She started getting excitement. There was one lady that had a friend that may be looking. So we're all looking for these magic answers. And, and a lot of times it's, it's in front of us. It's just being uncomfortable and making those calls to people maybe that you haven't spoke to in five. Who cares? What's right. the worst thing that's going to happen? That's huh? Right. That's right. I agree. All right. So well, let's, let's bring oh, Greg on. You ready? Greg, Greg, Greg. Yes. Let's get I got him. I got him here. He's still here. You got him? He's ready. on. I'm still Look, here watching the show. Going. What's up, Greg? That Later was an today. awesome talk. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I'm happy you're here. Tell tell the audience a little bit about you. So I am I'm part of St. Cloud Proud with uh no really uh we're we're out to make St. Cloud proud. I'm I'm a roofing contractor here in St. Cloud and uh, I've known Steve for I don't know a long time. It seems like forever. And um I'm a person in long-term recovery, and that brings me to what I would like to share with you today is I haven't, I've had the opportunity that I haven't drank in 32 years, but drugs and alcohol made my life quite the train wreck as a young person. And um, I worked with guys getting out of prison for about 10 years, and I, I've always tried to give back in some form or fashion. And um, I was always like, why isn't there a way for younger people? Why isn't there something for younger people when you get in trouble the first time that isn't punitive, that's, in, that's, that's supportive and sends them, you know, leads them to a path of recovery? And why isn't there something... And uh, I was at a I was at a chamber of commerce meeting three years ago, and I met a young lady who said, "I'm here to uh, I'm here to promote my husband's scuba diving business, but I really have a heart for recovery, and I'd like to bring a recovery high school into into Central Florida." And uh, we we then formed the nonprofit, and uh, we hitched horses, and we've been trying to trying to make this thing a, a little a little work chug along. And we we um, because of lack of funding and and because of COVID and everything going virtual, anyhow, we decided to launch virtually, and we're now we had our first uh, we had our first graduate already now that we helped graduate, and uh, we're up to 15 students right now at present uh, virtually. So I couldn't be happier with that. And we don't have any state funding yet. We have we have a measure in the uh, in the Senate that's going over to the House, or I don't know which way it is. Uh, an called an appropriation for some funding, but we've been all donation based for, for the past past year and a half since we launched and just trying to try and do uh, figure it out. But recovery high schools aren't anything new, but uh, 
but they, they've been around for both. To me, I, I, I mean, I, I right. I've been so I've been sober for four, for 32 years and I had never heard of them before three years ago. Generation found is a great introduction to what a recovery. It's a movie that, that uh, you can watch the blurbs on, on YouTube. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix still, but it was on Netflix, the, the, the full movie, but it, it presents what a, what a, what a recovery high school looks like. You know, generally it's, it's peer led, um, peer, peer, you know, Every, everything peer. I'm more of a peer than than, a, than go to a professional and talk. I'd rather have somebody that's been there, done that, and overcome that, and kind of partner with me. To, and that's kind of how most recovery works: has been there, done that, and you know I've overcome it, so I can I can lead you to the you know, help and healing that you desire. And that's. Um, I, mean. I don't want to interject. Right? I mean, people that know me, Ted, know I had my struggles years ago, and at least for me, that's why I'm passionate about this. It could have made a difference. You know what I mean? Because right. I, I put a lot of my family members, my mother, to just through hell. So, you know, and, 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 the, and the darker side, side. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ted. No, no, I was just going to say you have your, everybody's got their personal journey that they have to go through. And then mm -hmm. having, you guys have an event coming up. And that's why. So, that's sort of you all that are following. Um, that's how Greg's kind of the in surprise here. Greg's guest. <laughs> Uh, I love a surprise guest. It's good. It's really good. We need support. That's why, yeah. please. And, and Ted was gracious enough. So well, anytime I can, I don't know if you know, but I have a master's degree in health services administration with a nonprofit uh, background, including oh, nice. alcohol, nice. drug abuse, and mental health. So nice. I'm very nice. familiar. That's why I'm very active and still have active activity in organizations in town. Nice, so I, have a heart for, I have a heart for what you're doing. Nice. Um, so talk about the event. When is it? What are we doing? Uh, how can we support? Go ahead, um, Steve. Can you remember the date yet? May Day 5K. May Day 5K. May 6th. The day May 6th. of the so you usually can't Mayo. remember the day. <laughs> so don't drink too much on Cinco de Mayo, but it's the day after um, May 6th, 7.30 a.m. Race starts at 8. 8.30. 8.30. 8.30. I stand corrected. Thank you, sir. And it is, it's in St. Cloud. It's a Galt's Landing, um, Forest Food Abundance. A gentleman by the name of Jim Gale has kind of put together a self-sustaining community, if you will. And at this juncture, I'll let Greg finish it up. So, so um, if, you're, if you're familiar with St. Cloud, it's at the end of Old Melbourne Highway at Dead Ends to where Mercury and Marine's old, old test lake used to be is on, on the left-hand side. And, and Jim Gale bought the, I don't know, a bunch of acres on the right-hand side. To, to to put out a, um, a off-grid permaculture community it's a beautiful property uh, it's it it's a food forest um, and he he is he is uh, developing uh, a, a freedom freedom farm education academy and so to, to help people help people learn more about uh, food forests in their backyard so so that's what his, his big deal is is that that he wants everybody to be growing healthier food and um, and uh, it's going to be a great event, I, I, and I couldn't be more, more happier with the property out there because he has he has container homes. I mean, they're a beautiful little container homes set up as an Airbnb and and uh, an education center there, and um, and, uh, and a whole a whole lot of plants that I don't even know what all the plants are. Where you can walk around, <laughs> see all the plants, and it, it's kind of kind of like uh, um, it, it'll be it'll be a beautiful place for it all to happen at. I, I think, too, real quick, Ted, I know we're on time, but yeah. I think some people get intimidated by 5K. It doesn't matter. You can crawl it. I don't care if you hop right. it. Just so, show up. We need the support, and it so will be appreciated. Because, because I have the rhyming, the rhyming, because I, I write poetry almost every day of my life now, but uh, uh, you can walk, you can run, or just come and have a little fun. So There you go. <laughs> I love it. Also, right. so how, can they, how can they get tick or how can they register? Mm -hmm. um, we uh, either either go to um, um, Florida Recovery Schools of, of Central Florida dot org or I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, the Give Lively link would be would be easier. I'll do that. I'll post that link, y'all, in the comments below. That so awesome. uh, but you can obviously reach out to me, reach out to Steve. We'll make sure Greg is tagged as well. You can find it one way or another. But we'd love for you guys to get out. What a great um, what a great day that's going to be a five day. Hear them. You're not. You don't have to run it. So no excuses. You can walk and, it. If and you if want. you, when we're having Marla from Drums and Recovery is going to be out and finishing up with Drums and Recovery, and uh, my friend Linda is doing a, a meditation, a Lectio Divina meditation, which is a different kind of meditation too. So that that'll, and we'll have shade and fans for all that too. So it'll, it'll be good. 
Ted, thank you. Right. Just two hours on someone's Saturday morning. We'd love the support. That's, a, That's right. So thank you. If you can't, if you can't make it, we I'll say it. We'd still like you to donate and give back. So reach out to Steve and reach and, out. To and Greg. if you ever know anybody, any 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 parents that are struggling with 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 teens yeah. that, that need a place to to have a respite and and uh, get their get get on the road to recovery, we'd love to be part of that journey. I love it. All right, gentlemen, what a pleasure, what an honor to have you guys on. Steve Pugh, Greg Woolley, you guys check out what's scrolling across the bottom there and also in your comments section below. Get out and support these guys and support everybody in the community that is struggling with this, dealing with this, uh, and is trying to give back to that community and get them he healthy and well. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Hey, Ted, you're awesome.